Okay, we're back to talk about the iceberg canvas today. If you're not familiar with the iceberg model, it's quite a popular model in system thinking, then you can search for it on our website. You'll also find it on Wikipedia and other places. Um, today, we have um, set the level levels for the different canvases. And uh, this one is set at level six, which means it's intermediary to, to advance. It's a little bit more uh, complex than some of the other ones we explored earlier on. Um, and it will take a bit more time uh, and a bit more engagement in terms of uh, participants' contribution. There's uh, more boxes here. We also have uh, another canvas that simplifies it a little bit. Um, but this is the kind of official model of the iceberg. Um, and it takes a little bit of understanding of uh, both systems thinking and the iceberg canvas uh, to facilitate this and a bit of time and so forth. So we've set it as intermediary. Uh, let's jump right in and take a look at uh, what it is exactly. The iceberg model is a model used in systems thinking to illustrate the various levels of abstraction to a situational organization. Um, so it's essentially from asking the question, is this a, a superficial uh, phenomena we're dealing with or a more fundamental one? Is it a symptom or is it a systemic issue? Uh, just like with an iceberg, a large percentage of what is going on in our world is hidden uh, from view. And the iceberg model tries to uh, make this explicit by depicting it as a series of layers and uh, that sit beneath the everyday observable world. This canvas is designed to help us uh, start to think about and map out the different levels of abstraction to the system we're dealing with, uh, from the observable events to underlying patterns that generate these, to supporting structures and ultimately the mental models uh, used. We first map the existing system uh, on the left-hand side, um, and then we go up the right-hand side. We'll look at it here now. Um, so this is building upon both the ice iceberg model, but also a theory you, you may have heard of. Um, and asking what is the existing system on its different levels uh, on the left hand side there so we're going to start on the top left i'll just give an overview and then i'll i'll briefly walk through different stages we have up there for facilitating it on the left we walk uh, down uh, from the top um asking participants uh, how they see the system on these different levels and then at the bottom we shift from the current pattern paradigm uh, to the new future um systems paradigm and we get future mental models and then we got left hand side to explore what would emerge in terms of new uh, structures and patterns and events uh, given that change in paradigm until we get to the end on the top right and then step back and discuss uh, insights and learnings so that's the overall model um this is uh, we'll walk through it now we're going to start by um, defining uh, the system we're interested in um what uh, might this be might be migration let's say or immigration immigration in uh south of spain let's say that's the the area of uh, our interest we'll post it up here and um so that's the first stage and then start from the left hand top box and have participants post up the ideas about the current events. So uh, what are the current events that we see? Um, so we'd ask them to take time, maybe uh, five minutes to post up their ideas. What do they see as the current um, outcomes to the systems? So that might be something around migrant workers uh, coming from North Africa to pick fruit in uh, summer uh, treated badly, something like this. And um, we'd give them time to do that. Um, and then we would uh, look at what they posted up, come back and uh, discuss it as a group. And then um, we move on to the next one and essentially stay iterating through that. So what are the current patterns we see? Um, we see that the situation is getting worse, maybe. We we do the same again. We might take 10, 15 minutes for each box. What are the structural features 
Um, well, one of them might be that North African countries are relatively poor and Spain is relatively wealthy, and that's creating some imbalance there. Uh, for example, what are the mental models? Well, there's probably racism here as an example of a, a mental model um, that some of the the owners of these farms in Spain is, are holding. Um, and then here we're going to ask them to shift. We're going to stay iterating through that process, post up your ideas, let's have discussion. And then we're going to ask them here to shift to the new mental model. What would be a better mental model, a systems uh, thinking mental model that would help us um, essentially shift the dynamic here or move to a new system. Um, so it might be something around, you know, trying to promote um, multicultural integration or a better understanding of, of, of these people's situation um, and so forth. And then what would we then follow up on the left-hand side here, asking them what follows from that, um, given that change of mental model, what would, be, what, what would we see in the emergence of new structures? Um, we might see, not sure, uh, maybe new housing or new working path structures um, or agreements or rules or laws um, for the migrant workers. And then here it might be... Um, yeah, better patterns of 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 work over time, and and ultimately maybe um, the better integration. We might actually see you know migrants um, being active and accepted con contributors to um, the society in southern Spain. So that's what the iceberg model is. We're essentially iterating through those boxes with the participants, having those conversations, and finally we're asking them to step back and discuss well. Uh, the overall learnings here and um, the insights and so forth. And it's essentially about helping them to understand the existing system on its different levels and, and helping them to look at this systemically, move away from those um, events and, and pattern level down to the more systemic level and asking them, helping them see that if you change the mental model of the paradigm, something very different uh, could emerge. And of course, that's what systems change is about. So hopefully that was helpful. I will leave it uh, there for now.